Oregonfilmfestival.com and the director of the Oregon Screams Horror Film Festival. We've got an event coming up uh, in August we're excited about, and we're joined by a screenwriter who may have set a record with three completely different screenplays in the same festival. Wow. And uh, we are going to talk to our guest, John Munn, today. How are you doing, John? I'm doing great, and I am overwhelmed and grateful for the festival for, for loving my little story so much. So thank you. Thank you to everyone who voted, and thank you for all the folks that, that read them. And I really am deeply appreciative and really, really blown away. So thank you. Well, thank you. Cool. And your um, you know, uh, Adventures in Serial Killing is the very high-rated screenplay in a very competitive category, the best horror film category. Uh, horror screenplay category is obviously the most ferocious of competition in this fest. So to do well in that one, you've got three screenplays in total, um, really doing a great job. But let's focus a minute on Adventures in Serial Killing. And, and sure. I want you to tell me in your own words, because I ruin synopsis all the time. So please tell me in your own words, what is this story about? It's about two teenagers who find out that uh, one of their parents is a serial killer and enlists the help of the other parent to try and bring them to justice. And it all takes place in their house. Oh, wow. All right. Well, um, what was the motivation for coming up with this? You know, why write this particular story? Well, um, we're going to talk about my other screenplays in a bit, but those were written like 20 years ago and at a time when things were like really, really dark. And my wife, we've been together now. Well, our 20 year date anniversary was in November. And our 15-year wedding anniversary was in April. And she just asked me last summer, she says, why don't you write anymore? And and you used to write comedy all the time. And, and just why? And I said, well, I, I just, I don't want to write dark stuff anymore. And she said, well, then don't. And I said, but I like horror stuff. I grew up on Rod Serling and Twilight Zone and Night Gallery and Psycho and Alfred Hitchcock and... I'm a movie holic for that kind of stuff. And she said, well, just write what you love. So I did. Um, so the father in it is an, a writer and an avid movie collector. He has gone out and gotten original props from all the films that he loves. Uh, even named his uh, son Kevin, as in Kevin Smith, because they're the Smith family. Um, so, uh, but it's his daughter that really puts things together and starts to figure things out and enlists her brother to try and um, stop him from doing it again, or at least bring him to justice for what he has been doing. Wow. And I just wanted to write something funny. And I love to hear my wife laugh when she reads my stuff. So I've got the best audience in the world, and she's a tough audience, I will tell you. I'll get a snort. I'll get a smile. But sometimes there's a good laugh. Mm, you know, you earned it. So. Well, tell me about the other screenplays that came from the dark place. Uh, uh, well, one is, uh, you know, they always, they always say you have an easy pitch. So um, a nice place to visit, which is an official selection, thank you very much, is, uh, well, that's like Silence of the Lambs meets Scanners. It's uh, about a burned out psychic detective who is retired, who gets pulled into a case in the small eastern Washington town uh, because they think they have a serial killer who may have supernatural abilities of his own. There's no proof uh, that he's actually done the things that he's done other than he's been at the place at the same time. And bringing her in is a way to try and figure out perhaps there's another way that he's been going about doing it. Um, so uh, there's just a, a lot of dark road that she's uh, going down that I also was going down at the time. And um, the other script, Bitter Harvest, um, was I was in my uh, uh, first marriage and it just was not a good place. But then I read an article, and I swear to God, these two things are not connected. I read an article about a farmer in a southeastern state that I won't mention um, that had had a psychotic break and took the life of his wife and then drove down to the bank and took the life of the head of the bank and then took the bank hostage. And I wondered what sort of thing would cause a person to do that? And could I make that person sympathetic? So um, in the story that I've written, um, they lost their son and he is going through, um, 
intense therapy that he wants nobody to know about. Uh, and he's suffering from post-traumatic stress syndrome and starts against mm -hmm. his son, um, who's telling him to do things he probably shouldn't do, but feels uh, compelled that he should do if he's really the father that he says he is. So you can see that those are back there and these are up here. I've written um, three scripts since I started writing again in August. And uh, I would st all three of them have been for my wife, Sarah, and uh, two of them are also for my kids, uh, specifically Max, because I'm raising a teenager. So they're they're filled with teenagers. <laughs> right. So I see the, the relations, some relations from just things going on in your life mm -hmm. um, with some little tidbits in your scripts there. And I, I want to ask, where did you get started in writing, you know, for production and writing for television or film? When did you, how did you make that step? Well, my grandfather uh, was a published author. He wrote for Weird Tales. His friends and luminaries were people like Robert Block who wrote Psycho and Richard Matheson who wrote uh, I Am Legend and Ray Bradbury, of course, the original was Ray Bradbury. So I got to meet these people when I was younger and uh, they were just great people that happened to write dark things. And uh, also at Stephen King at convention when I was 14, and he told me not to not get involved in novel writing because uh, two reasons. Number one, all the rejection that goes into it. And number two, he didn't need the competition, which is really <laughs> a 14 year old. But um, so I started writing novels and uh, I really didn't have the patience for the, all the verbose prose and the and description and the places. And I, I just wanted to quickly get to the dialogue. And I was reading so many scripts at the time that I realized I could just write scripts go go very small on the the description of place and thing and focus on the dialogue and that was heaven for me i didn't have to write a 400 page novel or 500 page novel my grandfather up to a 600 page novel i could just write a 120 page or less script and still be able to tell a story so that was heaven for me wow interesting interesting background and so what do you have planned for the future um, already just wrote my newest one and I put it out in the competition. Um, it's called uh, Treasure Trap. Uh, it's about a young woman who goes to England and when she's 17 with the rest of her, a couple of her classmates because she really doesn't want to explore England. She wants to explore a live action role playing game being done at a castle in Peckforton, which is something I did when I was 17. But at the same time, she also falls in love. So it's very much. Um, uh, uh, romantic comedy in the style of uh, John John Hughes, so I, who I also really love. And I've also written recently The Morris Field Misfits um, and The Sword of Fate, which is a uh, uh, young adventure, sort of like Goonies meets Indiana Jones. And uh, that's been a lot of fun. And then there's got two more stories that can actually be sequels and turn into a trilogy if I want to. And I'm just um, starting to break ground on two more scripts. So just writing every day and when I can. So what do you hope to accomplish when you write stories like this? Are you looking for someone to represent your work or are you putting together your own team to try and produce some of your stories? I just want to tell stories and have a really good manager or an agent um, find a place for me out there. I also, I wouldn't mind just being a spec writer or, or you know, do a pass over a script or just just the chance to write and um, share words and tell stories. And it's just become a lifelong dream of mine. Um, had a comic book shop for, for, for a while and, and I met all those writers and they're just great people. And to be able to tell stories, share stories. I mean, it's it's and uh, I asked my grandfather why he wrote sometime and he asked me, so well, why do I breathe? I know that sounds cliche, but it's. He just has to. And um, to share stories is just, why wouldn't you? If you've got a story mm -hmm. that you want to share, put it down on paper. Uh, if you've got a lifelong um, problem that you might be working through, work it out on paper and share the story if you want to. But my main goal uh, really is to find a manager or an agent, uh, someone that I can uh, enjoy the relationship with, and, and have them just said, hey, I, I've got this great grip. I can, I can represent that. Or uh, they can say, hey, you want to take a pass on this script? Or do you want to work on this idea? I worked uh, in a writer's room for a local comedy show for a while called Almost Live. And working in a writer's room is like nothing else. 
Um, so I love being given a prompt and just go. Um, Sid Caesar used to have a writer's room, and that room was, you know, you've heard of that writer's room. That's 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 Woody Allen and Mel Brooks and Larry Gelbert and Imogene Coca. And then they would have the Simon brothers, Neil Simon and his brother Sam out in the hall. That's for the kids in the hall. That's where that came from. Um, and he used to say, there's no such thing as a bad idea. We'll just throw it up in the air and we'll shoot it full of holes. And if it lives, then that script deserves to live. It does. If it doesn't, well, then the suggestions will just make it better. So I, I live to, to share my stories and uh, any constructive criticism that comes to making them better. All right. All right. Well, um, let's see if we can get that done for you and some kind of connections you can make at Oregon Screams Horror Film Festival. Glad you picked us to submit your work to. Um, uh -huh. Judges are very impressed with your work and um, you know, we're just excited to see your career going forward. Thank you. I mean, it's a Northwest festival and I'm from uh, Lakewood, Washington, which is right at the I-5 corridor. And to see something that's grown into something so amazing. I mean, I saw the the, um, the projection you guys did on a wall the, the summer that we were, you know, going through COVID. How cool is that? Um, so I'm yeah. Yeah, super excited. And also you're at what uh, the Clinton theater that they have Rocky Horror at. I did Correct. So we're using the Clinton Street Theater. It's been there forever. Uh, we were using Sunshine Mill Winery. It has a um, gigantic uh, drive-in theater screen, which I personally really, really like both. They're both very different. Um, the thing is about the drive-in theaters, in the summer we can't do it because the sun doesn't go down until 9 o'clock at night. <laughs> so people are there very late, but it's a fun thing to do in the late fall. And it gives it a little bit of a different perspective when you see your film on a gigantic screen like that. Really? Yeah, um, it's got to. But Clinton Street is an institution. You know, it's a, it's a fantastic place, and, and we love screening there. We screen our other festivals there, uh, Portland Comedy Film Festival, uh, and the Oregon Short Film Festival. So we've been working with them for a while. And, um, you know, we're just going to keep on. We go with the small businesses, with the mom and pas, and we go with the, um, you know, the small ownership groups, the non-corporate uh, entities. Uh, that are you know we don't always screen at those huge regals and all that so we we like the feel of where we're screening and it should be fun times and plenty of places to get a drink right outside you don't even have to repark you just walk across the street and um after the festival and good times to have it's just incredible how much you have invested in the cities around your festivals and um thank you for doing that i mean shedding light onto places in in, in big towns like what portland and houston just a lot of people like myself and so many people that love film just to find those areas instead of going to a multiplex. Finding the heart of, of films is, is the best place and, you, and you're doing that. So thank you so much. Thank you. Appreciate the kind words. So we'll have a good one. We'll see you around. We'll see you at the festival. See you then. All right.